Hi, I'm John, known as the MedPot Engineer Termel, and in this lesson 63, we're going to be talking about how marijuana regrows brain cells, which is useful for people with Alzheimer's. So, another great reason why marijuana should be legal and why oldsters with Alzheimer's should be sitting on the porch puffing it because in three months they can grow new brain cells. Marijuana may slow progression of Alzheimer's. Cosmos Online, October 19, 2006. Sydney, marijuana may contain compounds that slow the memory loss associated with Alzheimer's disease, according to a new U.S. study. Marijuana has strong anti-inflammatory effects, and many researchers believe that there is a compelling link between chronic inflammation and the progression of Alzheimer's, said co-author Gary Wink, a professor of psychology at Ohio State University. Inflammation in the brain is part of aging, Wink said. It happens to almost all of us as we age, but in some cases this inflammation gets out of hand and causes serious damage. In the study, treatment of rats with synthetic compound similar to marijuana reduced inflammation in older animals, in addition to making them smarter, said Wink, who presented the results at the Society for Neuroscience meeting in Atlanta yesterday. The compound substantially improved the memories of older rats, he said. These animals were able to hold on to key details of a specific task. Untreated older rats, on the other hand, were not. Evidence suggests that people who regularly smoked marijuana in the 60s and 70s rarely develop Alzheimer's disease, said Wink, adding that researchers are eager to develop a drug with the anti-inflammatory properties of marijuana, but without the drug's psychoactive effects. Shh, a little bit of high. The researchers treated young and old rats with WIN55212-2, a synthetic drug similar to marijuana. While the compound improved memory and helped control inflammation, it is not a candidate for use in humans because it still contains substances that could trigger a high. Ah, you could get high. It doesn't make you drunk and stupid. It just makes you high and smart. We don't use marijuana in our experiments because we're trying to find a compound that isn't psychoactive. Yeah, it makes people so sad that people laugh and have a fun time while they're getting better. And using synthetic compounds may eventually help us to separate the beneficial effects from the psychoactive effects. Why would you bother? During the third week of treatment, the animals were subjected to a memory test. They navigated a water maze that required finding an escape platform hidden just below the surface of opaque water. The rats were given several opportunities over three days to acclimate to the water maze. On the fourth day, the researchers timed how quickly each rat found the platform. The maze task is sensitive to memory impairment and also to aging, he said. Old rats tend to be pretty bad at navigating the maze. It's kind of like an elderly person trying to find his way around a house that he's not familiar with. Once the testing was complete, the researchers began to examine the animals' brains for signs of inflammation. They looked for certain kinds of immune cells that are typically found in large quantities in the brains of former Alzheimer's patients. They found that the marijuana-like compound decreased inflammation in the brains of young and old rats and that the treated animals in both age groups could find the platform in the water faster than the non-treated animals. Hmm. The most marked difference was between the treated and non-treated older rats. The compound significantly improved the older rats' memories, Wink said. They found the platform faster, suggesting that they were less apt to forget key information for the task. It's a pretty good prediction of how a human would respond to this drug, Herb. Well, they say that the reason that Alzheimer's is helped by marijuana is because of the anti-inflammation substances. There's another reason, I think. October 14th, 2005, Globe and Mail, study turns pot wisdom on head, and it says Calgary, forget the stereotype about dopey potheads, it seems marijuana could be good for your brain, while other studies have shown that periodic use of marijuana can cause memory loss and impair learning and a host of other health problems down the road, all false by the way. The new research suggests the drug could have some benefits when administered regularly in a highly potent form. Most drugs of abuse, such as alcohol, heroin, cocaine, and nicotine, suppress growth of new brain cells. Well, actually, they destroy them, too. However, researchers found that cannabinoids promoted generation of new neurons in rats' hippocampuses. 
Hippocampuses are the part of the brain responsible for learning and memory, and the study held true for either plant-derived or synthetic versions of cannabinoids. This is quite a surprise, said Ziag Zhang, an associate professor of neuropsychiatry research in the University of Saskatchewan in Saskatoon. Chronic use of marijuana may actually improve learning memory when the new neurons in the hippocampus can mature in two or three months, he said. Well, same thing must apply to Alzheimer's. Get your Alzheimer buddy out there token on the back porch for three solid months and see if he can grow himself some new neurons. The research by Dr. Zhang and a team of international researchers is to be published in the November issue of the Journal of Clinical Investigation, but their findings are online now. The scientists also noticed that cannabinoids curb depression and anxiety, which Dr. Zhang says suggests a correlation between neurogenesis and mood swings. So when you generate new neurons, neurogenesis, you feel good about it. And when you destroy neurons with alcohol, you get a head of hangover, you feel bad about it. Or at least it partly explains the feelings of relaxation and euphoria of a pot-induced high. Other scientists have suggested that depression is triggered when too few new brain cells are created in the hippocampuses. One researcher of pharmacology says he's puzzled by the findings. Yeah, they expected so much different. They were lied to and he believed the lies. As enthusiastic as Dr. Zhang is about the potential benefits, he warns against running out for a toke in a bid to beef up brain power or calm nerves. The team injected laboratory rats with a synthetic substance called HU210, which is similar but a hundred times as potent as THC, the compound responsible for giving mar marijuana users a high. So smoke a hundred joints! Anyway, the found that they found that the rats regularly treated with the substance twice a day for 10 days showed growth of neurons in the hippocampus. The researchers don't know if pot, which isn't as pure as lab versions, would have the same effect. Well, I bet it does. There's a big gap between rats and humans, Zhang points out. Yeah, big, small, big deal. But there's a lot of interest and controversy around the use of cannabinoids to improve human health. Cannabinoids such as marijuana and hash have been used to address pain, nausea, vomiting, seizures caused by epilepsy, ischemic stroke, stroke cerebral trauma, tumors, multiple sclerosis, and a host of other maladies. This is one incredibly great medicinal herb. Or you can take 40 pills, you know. There are herbal cannabinoids, which come from the cannabis plant, and the bodies of humans and animals produce endogenous cannabinoids. The substance can also be designed in the lab, so cannabinoids are useful. The plant is helping the humans. One receptor, known as CB1, is found primarily in the brain. The other receptor was thought to be only in the immune system, but recently they found the CB2 receptor in the brain, too. The brain stem is responsible for the basic body functions, such as breathing and gastrointestinal tract. If stimulated in a certain way, CB2 could be harnessed to eliminate the nausea and vomiting associated with post-operative analgesics or cancer or AIDS treatments, according to the researchers. Ultimately, new theories could be developed as a result of these findings, said Keith Sharkey, a gastrointestinal neuroscientist at the University of Calgary, lead author of the study. When asked whether his findings explain why some swear by pot as a way to avoid the queasy feeling of hangover, Dr. Sharkey paused and replied, It does not explain the effects of smoked or inhaled or ingested substances. Anyway, my favorite line after this was, This is, explains why we have so many brain cells and they have so few. This explains why we're so sharp and they're so dull. And finally, Pot joins the fight against Alzheimer's and memory loss. So, November the 19th, 2008. Uh, 60 Second Science. A large-scale study released this week showed that the herb ginkgo biloba has no effect in preventing dementia or Alzheimer's disease, but alternative medicine officiatums may find hope in a new research touting the benefits of another herb in preserving memory. Scientists from Ohio State University report that marijuana, contrary to conventional wisdom, which is wrong again, bunch of lies, may help ward off Alzheimer's and keep recall sharp. Their findings released today at the Society for Neuroscience meeting in Washington, D.C. Chemical components of marijuana reduce inflammation and stimulate the production of new brain cells, thus enhancing memory. Well, the last thing the masters want is for the slaves to get new brain cells, right?
The team suggested that a drug could be formulated that would resemble tetrahydrocannabinol, the THC, the psychoactive ingredient in pot, sauce making the user high. Again, worried about people laughing and feeling good. The research may ultimately drive those who fear impending dementia to roll their own solution to the problem. Study coordinator Gary Wink, a professor, has already devised a preliminary version of the substance that improves memory in lab animals. His team at the meeting said it works by activating at least three receptors in the brain targeted by THC, proteins on the surface of nerve cells, that then trigger cellular processes resulting in reduced inflammation and production of new brain cells that can boost recall. Understanding how the compounds work may pave the way for a pharmaceutical company to prepare its own med for human clinical trials. The researchers ducked the obvious question of whether it might be simpler, faster, and cheaper to simply light up a joint or eat a muffin. Could people smoke marijuana to prevent Alzheimer's disease if the disease is in their family? Wank said in a statement. We're not saying that, but it might actually work.